Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought you might be interested to see um, the making of the Sew Over It Work to Weekend Anna coat. So I've finished my Anna trench coat and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Um, it's taken me about a week to do all together and the one thing that I will say is that it was fairly straightforward. The instructions are brilliant as always with sew over it patterns and I absolutely absolutely love it. One of the problems I always have with ready to wear coats is the sleeve length because I'm so tall and my arms are like given arms the sleeves are always always too short for me but the beauty of being able to make your own means that I've been able to make the sleeves to fit me perfectly so I'm really really delighted with the coat um, I've got it on now, but I will put some pictures in at the end of me wearing it so that you can have a little look. And um, yeah, enjoy. Okay, so we're now on to Wednesday and I started the construction of this coat on Sunday. And what I did was I um, cut all my pieces out of the, of the fabric. And what I've done is I've done all the interfacing bits on the first the first part of the instructions which are here so I've interfaced the collar and the back facing piece and the front facing pieces as well so they've all been done and then what I had to do was think about what I wanted how I wanted the coat to be finished inside because it's not a lined coat um, so the inside has the potential to be seen if you wear it open and as you walk that kind of thing so you do need to think carefully about how you're going to finish your seams inside so what I decided that I was I was going to do was a Hong Kong finish to the seams which is essentially you um, finish the seams with bias binding um, so I was thinking about the bias binding that I wanted to use wasn't sure whether I wanted something that would just blend in so that you didn't see it or whether I wanted something to be a little bit of a contrast and so I actually decided on this which is if I just bring that closer so you can have a look can you see that there so this is a cotton bias binding it's navy polka dot I think it's really lovely this has only just come today and I've bought this from a seller on eBay called favorite fabrics I'll link to them down below if you want to go and have a look I think this I bought a full roll because I thought I could end up going through quite a lot of this on a coat and I think it was about £13 for 25 metres so so I've got that now this has only just come today and because I wanted to try and get as much of the coat done as possible at the weekend what I've done is I have constructed the collar so this is the collar here so that's all now finished it's got an interfaced side there and an uninterfaced side so that's now done pressed and stitched so that's ready I also have constructed the belt loops so there's four belt loops which are all here so they're all sewn together and ready to put into place when I get to that part in the instructions I have also attached the facing pieces so we've got let's have a look we've got the front facing pieces here and then the back facing there so they're all interfaced as you can see and they're all sewn together so they're all ready to go I've also made the epaulettes so they're here so there's two epaulettes for the shoulders I wasn't sure whether I actually wanted epaulettes on um, but I've decided to make them anyway and then once the coat's done I'll make a bit of, I'll make a, bit of a, a decision as to whether I think I want to finish them with those but yeah so they're done as well and the other thing I've done is I've done the belt so the belt is here so this is now made as well all turned out again pressed and stitched the only thing I haven't done is the opening it's all pressed but the opening where I turned the belt out the right way still needs hand stitching slip stitching so I've got to do finish that off yet but the belt's done and finally I have done the sleeves so the sleeves for the coat are in two parts you've got an, you can't see very well in the light I'm afraid but you've got an under sleeve and then an outer sleeve because obviously with a coat you need a bit more room in the sleeve so that you can get um, if you're wearing thick jumpers that kind of thing 
you can get those on. So the sleeves are now constructed. I've got some gathering stitches in the sleeve head at the top there as well and I've done both of those. The only thing I've not done is hem them. These I have not finished with bias binding because you're not going to see them so I've just simply overlocked the seams inside the sleeve. So they're done as well and now that my bias binding has come I'm going to carry on with my coat. So I've got the two front pieces attached at the shoulders to the back two pieces. I haven't, after you've done the interfacing, the next part of the instructions actually tell you to work on creating the vent in the back of the coat. If I just find the instructions I can show you. So, um, where is it? <coughs> Excuse me. So, so yeah, so this bit here is about how to finish the back seam of the coat and the, the vent as well so you've got that split in the back and I wanted to bias bind this seam so I left so I haven't done that bit yet so I'm now going to carry on with the instructions as they are and I'm going to leave the camera on filming so you can um, watch along as I sew so that's what we're going to do tonight we're going to have a look at the vent so the next thing so when I read this it's telling me let's have a look um, align the back pieces together along the centre back edge pin in place and starting at the neckline edge stitch along the centre back seam until you reach the circle at the top of the vent pivot at the circle marking and sew along the short slanted edge to the end making sure to back stitch um, so before I do this what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to bias bind each seam of each piece of the back pieces of the coat individually before I stitch them together so I'm going to do that now so before I do that, the other thing I forgot to mention was I've actually in done the pockets as well. So again, I don't think you can see this very well, but the pocket is is inserted into each side seam of the coat as well. So they're done as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bias bind, bias bind this seam of the side of the coat. So let's have a look at that now. So I don't know if you can see this, what I've done, if I just bring that closer so you can have a look, I've stitched, just open that out, I've stitched the one side of the bias binding to the outer of the coat and then I'm going to fold that over, press the hem up into the centre of the binding, fold over that edge and then I'm going to stitch along that edge so that you've got that really nice finish on both sides of the fabric and that I think that's going to look really really pretty. Okay so um, it's now daytime which is great because it means you'll be able to see my progress a little bit clearer. I spent last evening putting in the collar which obviously is here and the facing of the jacket as well so if I just turn it inside out you can have a look and see um, obviously that's my facing as that's attached there and you snip into the lining sorry you snip into the collar of the facing and the jacket just to obviously make sure that that curve is nice and um, yeah just so it all lies flat now the only thing that I've found problematic so far with the instructions is that it does tell you to obviously understitch the facing to the seam allowance of the collar and the jacket and the coat which I've done but it doesn't actually tell you when to stop and so I just merrily just turn it inside out so you can have a look but I carried on merrily stitching understitching all the way 
from the facing out round the collar right across to the other side and the only problem with that is when you turn it the right way round which I'll do now to show you is that you end up with an understitching line which is along the collar here but it also it goes right across to the facing and as you've got the, as you're wearing the coat obviously the the facing part is going to sit out like that so you're going to see that understitching line so what I actually did was I unpicked the understitching on the facing piece and I've just left the understitching just on the collar piece so the instructions weren't very clear about that or maybe it's just that I've not read them properly um, but as you can see inside I have bias bound all the edges of the facing pieces all the way down the coat I've bias bound the internal seams so that's the back seam there I've also done the collar no sorry that's the shoulder the sh each sh shoulder seam and the side seams of the jacket and once you get to see this on you'll see it better but obviously this is all down the front edge of the facing just inside the front of the of the coat so it's coming together really well now I've put the sleeves in um, and I don't like the gathering at the top of the sleeves um, when you look at the picture I'll put a little picture in, so in probably just about here so you can have a look but when you look at the picture of Lisa wearing this coat the sleeve heads don't look gathered at all but on the instructions there are notches on the sleeve head where you put gathering stitches and it does tell you to gather that in to fit it into the sleeve head but I've ended up with a real sort of poofy sleeve head on both sides and when I've tried it on I don't like that effect at all I just think it just looks more like a dress um, and it's just it's just not me so I'm going to take I haven't actually bound the sleeve the sleeve um, I've not finished that seam yet so I am going to unpick that around the sleeve head and I'm going to just play with it to try and get to, that to lay in quite flat because you've got quite a lot of room in the sleeve anyway with having an undersleeve and with it being a coat it needs to be obviously not very fitted so that you can move about wearing it so I don't actually think you need any gathering at all in that sleeve head and there's certainly none on the picture so I don't understand why I don't understand don't understand that at all maybe I've just um, misread it or whatever but anyway so I'm going to unpick that and have a go at that I've put on the epaulette tabs um, just on the top of the shoulders on both sides and I've also put the belt loops on and the belt is in place and I have on the edges of the sleeve I've bound the bottom so they're ready just to turn up and slip stitch and then the bottom of the coat I have bias bound um, the bottom edge so far I've just done one side so far and I'm going to have to turn, I'm going to have to unpick that because I've not caught the facing in so I'm going to have to unpick that and redo that um, but then I'm ready to sort of turn that over and finish off the bottom of the coat so that will be ready to turn up um, and hem and then that's all going to look really pretty so I'm not far off not far off just a few little bits to finish off the other thing as well fit wise I would say it's not as fitted as what I expected it to be I did think that the sleeves were quite loose and I appreciate the sleeves have to be loose because you might want to wear a thick jumper underneath but they were actually really really loose on me to the point where it felt too big so I have um, just gone over the seams on each side of the underarm under seam under seam under sleeve each arm, each seam of the under sleeve I have stitched probably another three eighths of an inch on each side and that feels much better so it doesn't look as loose now but overall I'm really happy with the fit and I've as I say I've done a size 12 to 14 so 12 round the shoulders waist it probably could it probably is just a little bit too big um, however I have only tried it on in my pyjamas and a, um, um, a sort of normal t-shirty type top which you know is probably going to be a bit loose anyway because um, I think a lot of the time I'm, I might be wearing a, um, a cardigan or something as well so so it'll probably be okay but yeah that's my next step to unpick the sleeve heads of the sleeves readjust those 
get the sleeves hemmed and um, finally do the bottom hem. Now the other thing with the epaulettes, I've read the instructions, the epaulettes all you do apparently is you just slide them under the tab like this. You don't have to make buttonholes or anything which is a bonus because I'd hate to get this far and actually um, I think I've done that the wrong way. I'm going to have to look at this, look at the instructions but I think you no, it's got to be that way. So yeah, you um, if you can see that, you slide the epaulette in underneath the tab, fold it over and then I have bought some buttons. I've just been to my local fabric shop and I've got a couple of blue buttons just for the tabs. So I'm hoping they'll be okay. Yeah, they look okay actually. Um, and then you literally just, I don't know if you can see that there, but you just stitch, hand stitch the button through the epaulette onto the, onto the seam of the coat and that's it. So there's no buttonholes to do or anything like that. So that makes your life easier if you're a bit um, terrified of buttonholes as I can be. So I'm going to do that now and then hopefully I'll show you it when it's finished. So this is my finished coat. I'm really, really happy with how it's turned out. But one thing I would say is that I do think it looks a little bit more casual than the look I was going for. I was wanting something a little bit more smart. And I think that's probably due to my fabric choice, which is this cotton twill. I think if I was going to make it again, and I think I probably will, I would use just a smarter fabric. So here's the inside of the trench coat. And as you can see, that binding finishes it off really nicely. So I'm really, really, really happy with how that looks. And uh, yeah, I think it looks great. Okay, so I thought you might like to see a few more close-up shots of my coat. So... Here is the finished article. I'm sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky. Um, there's the epaulettes as they've come out there. And if I just pan away, that's quite good lighting actually. So you can see the collar has gone in really, really lovely. And um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. That's it all the way down. Um, I'll just show you the inside so you can see the finish on the inside. So basically, I, as you can see, I've bias bound every single hem apart from the, sh the sleeve heads and the, the pockets as well. I've just overlocked those. Don't know if you can see those there. Uh, you can just see them, I think. There we go. Um, but otherwise, I really, really love the finish um, that the bias binding gives. If you can see at the bottom here as well, I've bound around the vent as well so when you're walking you get a little flash of the binding which is quite nice so yeah overall I'm really 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 happy with how this coat has turned out and I think I'm just going to get loads and loads and loads of wear out of it so I hope you've enjoyed this video please tell me what you think to the Anna coat have you made a trench coat yourself is the first one I've ever made and as I said earlier at the beginning of my video I absolutely absolutely love it and I think I'm gonna get loads of wear out of it um, it's quite a heavy coat so with it being in this gorgeous brushed twill I just think it's gonna be perfect for autumn and some of those winter days with a real snuggly scarf on as well um, so yeah I'm really 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 happy with it and I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, yeah, I will see you all again really soon. Bye-bye.